Go. Okay, guys, so good afternoon to you. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about the microscope lab, which you're going to be doing um, next week. So the first thing I want to do is give you a quick rundown of the parts of the microscope. So this microscope that you're looking at is a compound microscope, and what makes it compound is the fact that you have a set of oculars and you have a set of objectives. So you have two sets of lenses that makes it compound lenses, one compounded on another. So you have some parts you need to know. You have the oculars, which there are um, in cases of an ability to adjust the ocular so they move further away or closer to your eyes. So when you look through this, you want to put your oculars right about here so you're not actually touching, but you're coming very close. If you are a, a woman, you can actually feel it on your eyelashes. So your eyes are right here, and then you're gonna adjust. So I don't know if you can see this, but these move further apart and closer together, and you adjust that for your eyes. And so if you push it together, it'll all of a sudden come to look like it's one circle. And then you can adjust the oculars up and down so that you can see. So when you're looking through this, you should not be closing one eye. Okay, so you have those two lenses. The uh, objectives are coming in different strengths. So we have the 4X, the 10X, and the 40X. When you quit using your scope, you should always leave it on the 4X, which is your scanning objective. And that's because you don't want to damage the lens or have someone who comes behind you accidentally damage one of the objectives. They're quite expensive. The stage is this structure where you put the slide, okay? And then here we have a, a coarse focus and a fine focus. This moves the stage up and down so it comes closer and further away from the objectives. Underneath here we have a condenser. It does exactly what it says. It condenses the light. And you can slide the iris diaphragm more open or more closed and this will allow more or less light changing the intensity. And you can read about what that means in your book. This is your light source, and it's controlled over here. There's a switch in the back that turns it on and off, but the brightness of the light is controlled with this little dial. So most microscopes, uh, especially compound microscopes, have a switch to turn them on and off, but then they also have a dial to increase or decrease the light. So if you turn it on and you don't see a light, make sure that you turn the dial to make sure that you've turned the light up. Also make sure that when you're looking that you snap the objective into place because if it's not quite in place all the way and you don't snap it, it'll look like you can't see anything because there's no light going through the objectives. The other thing is if you look into the microscope and it's blinding, it's super duper light, turn the light down a little, it'll actually help you to be able to see the structure. So part of this week's uh, challenge for you, for your skills, is to learn to use the microscope. So if you just learn to use the camera, you're not gonna have accomplished everything you need to accomplish. So make sure that you get comfortable with the microscopes. The other type of microscope that we have is the dissecting microscope. It only has one set of lenses, it just has oculars. Now you can change the magnification right here, okay? And you can focus it with this coarse dial. This allows you to see larger things. So a lot of times if you're working with something small but too large to actually be on a slide, you'll use this dissecting microscope. And you should take pictures of things with both of these um, for your PowerPoint, which your TA will be telling you more about. Now let me tell you real quickly or show you very quickly our camera. The camera actually plugs into your computer and it will allow you to take a digital picture which you can put into a PowerPoint presentation. And the camera fits into the microscope like this. In some cases, you have to put um, a small uh, adjuster so that it will fit into the ocular, but you put the camera in like this. The important thing for you to note here is that once you get this in, it's gonna see what you saw. So in order for you the camera to get a good view, you're gonna to have to focus on what you want, then put your camera in, and then you also may have to play with the computer a little bit to get the light adjusted just so before you take your picture. What you should be doing as a group is dividing up, and while you're taking a picture with the slide that you got into focus here, 
your colleague can be taking a picture with another microscope that's on your table. So you have two compound scopes and a stereoscope and you need to be working together in order to get all the pictures you need. The other thing that's important that you know is that when you're finished and you're ready to leave the laboratory, and this should happen in every single lab, that you take the ocular and put it back in place. Because if you do not, dust will get in there and it will destroy the microscope. And we really do not want that to happen. Now, you need to be using lens paper to clean the ocular. So lens paper comes in these little books. Do not use tissue paper or paper towels. This is specialized, it's very soft, and it will keep from scratching the lenses. You can use this on the oculars. You can also use it, oh sorry, on the oculars and on the objectives. The oculars you have to clean fairly often because as I said, uh, ladies can feel the uh, oculars with their eyelashes and unfortunately they tend to leave mascara on them and so they often need to be cleaned off. Sweat and other stuff gets on them. A little nasty to consider, but that's why we clean them with lens paper, okay? Now, you're gonna be making slides. You have some prepared slides that are already made for you, so those are very handy. Somebody's made them for you. You can just put them on to the microscope and you can look at them. There's several that are here. You have a series of five that you need to look at. Each table has those five slides on there, and we'll talk about those in just a moment. But you're also going to be making a wet mount. The book shows you how to do that. I'm going to give you a very quick rundown of what to do. So you'll be making a slide with some diatomaceous earth. Diatoms are organisms that have glass in their cell walls. Like they have silica in their cell walls. And so they've been around for a long time. And when you look at the diatomaceous earth, it's really actually very pretty. So you're going to put a small drop. Notice when I say small, I mean small drop of water on your uh, microscope slide, okay? And then you're going to take a very small amount of diatomaceous earth and you're going to put it in there. This is a ton. What I just used is like way more than you need, okay? And then you're going to take your cover slip, okay? And you're going to put it at a 45 degree angle, okay? Make sure the water goes all the way across the edge and then you're very slowly gonna put it down so that the water goes all the way across and there's no bubbles, okay? When you go to look at this, you wanna look at the edge of where this white material is because if you look right in the thick of it, you're not gonna be able to see anything. You gotta look at the edge. A little dab will do you. If you use too much, all you're going to see is a big blob of white and that's not going to help you. You want to see the individual cells that are actually in this powder. So let's take a look at some of the other organisms that are going to be in the lab. We have some living organisms for you. So we have some Glea capsa. You need to know what that is. You need to know if it's a eukaryote or a prokaryote. You need to know if it has a cell wall, if it doesn't have a cell wall. You need to know if it's plant or if it's animal. We have some green hydra. All right, you can see those. And you're gonna look at these under with a dissecting microscope. Um, they're actually a lot of fun to look at. Again, you need to know prokaryote, eukaryote, is it an animal, is it a plant, does it have cell walls, does it not have cell walls? You need to look at all of those. Here's the diatomaceous earth, so you'd be looking at that. And then we also have in this sample right here, some daphneas, so these are water fleas. You're gonna use those again later on in the semester. Um, these guys, you can look at them with a dissecting microscope, take a picture, look at them with the compound microscope, take a picture. When you look at them with the compound microscope, you can see their legs moving, but you can also see their heart beating. You can then also look at Artemia. We have them hatching, but by the time you get in here, they will be little bitty uh, animals. They're commonly called sea monkeys, okay? And they look kind of like little shrimp, and you'll be able to get them out of this pink tub here and take a look at those. Again, a little dab will do you. Please be careful with our animals, even though they're very small, they deserve to be treated very well. And then finally, we come over here to the chalkboard. These are the organisms that you need to look at. Now, your instructors may have more uh, directions for you, and if they do, they'll put those up. They may put them on another part of the board. But these are all the organisms that your group needs to get a picture of, okay? Um, by the way, with the plant, you want to add salt to it. 
because when you do, you'll be able to see the uh, plasma membrane, so the cell membrane pull away from the cell wall, and that's really kind of interesting. Um, so at any rate, you want to make sure that you get all of these things, get pictures of them. Each person, the, the picture that they take, they need to put their name on that picture on your PowerPoint, and they need to put information about these guys on your PowerPoint. You're responsible to find that. Your instructor is going to tell you specifically what they want. Make sure that you meet all those requirements. And with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful lab, and I'll see you next time.